Hi everyone, welcome to MS Power Automate. In today's video, you'll be learning how to use a text group of actions to manipulate your text and date time values. Microsoft Power Automate Desktop allows you to manipulate text and date time. Maintaining consistent text, numerical, and date values are very important. This is especially true in some fields such as the finance and logistics field. So you can find all the text group actions over here. And when you want to perform actions with text type variables, you will need to specify the text either by entering it as input or as a text variable. The actions store the output in a new variable. So firstly, we have the append line to text action. This is to add a line of text to a single text value or list of text values. This action stores the resulting text as a new text variable. For example, over here, I've set my new variable as please approve this invoice and the name of this variable is text variable over here. I'll save it and next I'll deploy the action append line to text. So the original text will be the variable that I've set earlier and the line to append which is the line which that I would like to add will be over here and the variables produce is result. So I'll save it and I'll show you how the results look like. So I've deployed the display message box over here just to show you guys. So over here it just says results. And I'll run it. And the first line is the text variable that I've set. And the second will be the append line to text action that I've set. Next, we have the get subtext action. This is a very powerful action as you use this action when we want to extract a specific portion of the text or a list of text values. So over here, you can see that you are able to set the start index property to retrieve text starting at a specific character position or at the start of the text. So you have two options over here. You are also able to set the length property to end at another position or at the end of the text. So click on it for these two options as well. So when you click on number of characters over here, you are supposed to list the number of characters you want to retrieve over here. So for mine is 2. Do note that the character position uses a zero based index. So for example, I've set the variable over here to the 21 latest business opportunities based on your selection. And let's say I want to retrieve the number 21. So the letter T over here will be index 0. So you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So the number 2 will be index 10. Do note that you have to count the spacing in as well. So for mine, the character position starts at 10. And since the number 21 has two characters, I've listed the length of my characters to be 2. And the variables produced here will be named subtext. So when I run the action, and I find the subtext variable over here, you can see that the value is 21, which is correct. Next, we have the pet text action. This increases the length of text to a certain value. For this, you can add white space, word, or phrase before or after the text or list of text values. This action will add characters that are fixed by you to the text so that the final text reaches your desired length. And this action will store the padded text as a new text variable as well. So over here when you see pad, it means that you have the option to add characters to either the left or the right side of your text. For text for padding, it will be the character or text that will be added to lengthen the original text. And for total length, it will be the total character length of the final padded text. This means that the text of 
padding will be repeatedly added until the final text is of the specified length. So for example over here, the text to pad will be from the variable subtext which is from before the value will be 21. And I will want to add 8 of this x character to the right side. So the total length will be 10. So I'll save it and run and see what I'll get. So the variables produced will be called padded text. So let's look for it in the flow variables. And over here you can see that the value is 21 with 8 characters of x at the back which is also correct. So next we have the trim text action. This is pretty straightforward. It allows you to remove white space from a text string and you can do so to the beginning, end or both of a text string. This is very useful as your data might have an accidental space bar at the back at times and it could potentially affect the accuracy of your data. So use this trim text action to clean the data before performing text comparisons. It is a recommended best practice. So for example over here, text to trim is pretty straightforward. And what to trim, you have, few, you have a few options. The white space characters from the beginning, white space characters from the end and white space characters from the beginning and end. Next we have the change text case. Use this action to change the case of the text value. You can do so to a single text value or a list of text value and you may change the casing of a text to uppercase, lowercase, title case or sentence case. Upper and lower case are pretty straightforward so so for title case, it is when you want every word to begin with capital letters. And for sentence case, it is only when you want the first word to start with capital letters. So over here on, this, on the action, you can choose the text to convert and what, are you, what you would like to convert it to. So we have the four options here. So next we have create random text. This is pretty straightforward as well and is used to generate random password according to your preferred text length and whether or not you like to include uppercase or lowercase letters, digits and symbols. So over here I have my action and you can actually disable or enable these features. And you can also specify the minimum and maximum length for the text. Next we have the split text action. So use this when you want to separate a single text value into a text list of items. So you enter a value or text variable as the input here. And ideally the text should include recognizable delimiters that separate the items. So for example like commas and full stops. So over here on the text to split, you enter a value or a text variable as the input. So for my over here, the recognizable delimiters that separates the items are commas. So this action will split the text separated by a comma and store them into a list. For the delimiter type, you can choose between standard or custom. So when you click on standard, you have the choice to choose between space, tab and new line. But for mine, since it's comma, it will be a custom delimiter. So over here, you will just write down the characters that were used as the delimiter. Over here, you will see its regular expression. And it is used when you want to specify whether the delimiter will be a regular expression. But I will not go through this today as it is slightly more complicated and we'll be going through this in future videos. So next we have the replace text action 
and it is used to identify a string in a text and replace it with another string or character. And you can customize the search to be case sensitive which is over here where you can disable or enable the function to ignore the case or to contain regular expressions. Regular expressions here means if we want to specify whether the subtext are regular expressions but we won't focus on that for now. The focus here is to walk through how to figure the action and give it a bit of context of why the action is useful. So over here, we we'll want to find the dollar sign symbol and replace it with US dollars. Okay, now on to date time actions, which you can find under date time over here. Okay, so first we have the get current date and time action. This is pretty straightforward. This action can be set to only get the current date or both date and time. You may also set the time zone property to the system default, which is what you have configured on your computer. Or you can set a specific time zone which you will have options to choose from. So over here on time zone, you have system time zone or specific time zone and when you click on it you will have all these options to choose from so over here like i said earlier you can choose from current date only or current date and time there are many properties you can choose from as well like year month or day and to view these properties click on select variable so for example over here and when I type current date time, you'll see this small arrow over here and you can click on it and you'll see a drop down list of all the properties for current date time and you may choose the one that you prefer. So you have day of the week, hour, minute, second and more. So this action is useful for example when you are trying to save your files but you have multiple versions of that same file. So you can also use the add to date time action to add a specified amount of the selected time unit to a date time variable. So over here under time unit, you can click on it and you can see that you have many options from seconds, minutes, hours, days, months and years. In cases where you want to subtract the date time, you can actually just add the negative sign in front over here. Wow. So next we have subtract dates. So you may choose to get the difference in days, seconds, minutes or in hours. And that difference will be stored as the new variable. So over here you can see from date, it is the date time to subtract the first date time from. This will be the base date time. So generally put the later date or time in this attribute. In subtract date over here, it is the date time to subtract. And the get difference in here, you can choose between seconds, minutes, hours, and days. So overall, if you want to find out the difference, use subtract date action. But if you want to get the date time after adding or subtracting a specified amount of the selected time unit to a date time variable, you use the add to date time action. So next, the convert date time to text action. You use this to convert a date time value to text using a specified custom format. This action's properties contain several options regarding the format of the date time input. So for example, you want to convert a date time variable that was created with the get current date and time action to text. So using this action, you may choose between a standard or custom format over here. When you choose standard, you have all of these options, short date, long date, short time, etc. And when you choose custom format, just ensure that your combination is in a compatible date time format. So don't worry if you are unsure of what formats I'm talking about, this is basically what I mean. The image here shows the various date formatting if you want a standard date time format. 
and next when you choose a custom format these are the representations and the meaning behind them to use for different combinations you'll be able to view this from the microsoft website which i'll be linking down below so a way to use this action is when you want to create a new folder and you can name it using the formatted data variable that was produced earlier like this Lastly, we have the convert number to text action. So you enter a number or a numeric variable to convert to a text variable. And over here is decimal places. It just means that you can set the number of decimal places to include. And for use thousand separator, you use it when you want to specify whether or not you want to use punctuation as a thousand separator. So to help you visualize better, I've set a variable here named number to 88. And over here in my display message, it will just be a simple addition of 88 plus 88. But over here, I'm using my convert number to text action where I want to convert the number 88 to text and I'll be adding two decimal places over here. So next for my display message, I'll be using the same formula as earlier, just that I've changed the variable and converted the number to text. And let's see how the results are different. So over here, I'll just run from here. So before converting the number to text, my final results is 176 which is correct however once i've converted the number to text you can see that the application doesn't add the two numbers together instead they are just appearing side by side so we have come to the end of the video on text manipulation do remember to subscribe to our channel for more videos on microsoft power automate desktop thank you